All right, so I forgot that we're not doing four, but here's five with a bunch of different parts. Uh, my computer's running low on battery, so I'm gonna have to run back and forth. Um, but the first part says, 5a, explain the difference between TC201 instructions load 17 and load I17. So again, if you've been doing the TC201 PSA, uh, you know that load I uh, takes an address. It goes to that address. It takes this, we'll call this address two, and it loads from that address into the accumulator. Whereas load, so I'm gonna change this just to load, load address one would take address two and put that in the accumulator instead of whatever is here at address two. So that's the fundamental difference. Uh, explain what will be printed out in response to the following Linux command and it's okay it's grep dash e so dash e i think allows you to specify a pattern and it looks like they have a sort of regular expression here where it's uh, c a or d and then r and then they have temp.txt Okay, uh, is there anything else I need to know? No. So, uh, dash E is allowing us to specify a pattern. Um, this is A or D. I think they're all in lowercase only, right? So, the two options that this could make are car or kadir. It'll look for these two. Grep is a sort of searching command in temp.txt and print out each file that, uh, sorry, each line that has either one of these two uh, in it. Okay. 5C says, oh geez, uh, apparently there are two 5Cs. Well, the first 5C says, consider a circuit consisting of one NAND and two wires. Z is the output of the NAND gate and also one of its inputs. The other input of the NAND gate is X. For each of the fall, four possible configurations, say whether it is safe. Okay, let's see if I got that all. So we have one NAND, its output, Z is also its input, and here's X. Okay, let's just make a truth table, tell them whether it's stable. Uh, oops, I don't, okay, well. So, stable here just means that one of the values uh, is not gonna be changing over time, right? Like it stays, you know, you can, Put in these values and it will stay that way for a long time. So if I put in zero and zero, my not and, okay, so this would be zero, this will be zero. Not and will be zero, so zero will stay as, z will stay as zero. This should be stable. Right? I think as it's looking to me like this is only not going to be stable when, uh, when the output here is different from the input. So when z is output different something from what we originally put in. Um, <laughs> or I guess another definition of not stable is it changes to another state. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll move on. So zero, one, if X is zero and y, uh, Z is one, then this not and outputs zero and Z becomes zero. So this state goes to this one. So it is not stable. We cannot stay in this state for, for any reasonable length of time. This one here, uh, I think should be fine, right? Because one and zero, not and, gives us zero. Z equals stay at zero. This should be stable. One and one. Uh, this looks good to me too. If we have one and one as our inputs, our output of a not and will be, oh, oops. Why am I messing this whole thing up? Oh, always, always, you know, trick to work. Um, let me retry this and make sure, I think I was completely, I think I was doing an AND gate, not a not AND. Try again, make sure that uh, this is what you're getting. It's, it's live, live footage of me messing up. Um, okay, if it's zero and zero, not AND will be one. So Z will be set to be one, and this is not stable because this state will go to this state. Okay, okay, we're getting there, we're, we're fixing it. X is zero, Z is one. Not and is one, and z stays as one. This is stable, okay? X is one, z is zero, not and is one. This will go to this state, uh, nope. 
This will go down to this state, uh, so it's not stable. Uh, this is also not stable because if you put in two ones, z will be set to zero uh, because not and in this case is zero. Is that right? So basically what I said here is that if x is one and z starts at zero, z will change to a one. Zero, it'll change to a one. When we input one though, the output then becomes zero because the input when I have two ands going into a not and, that's a zero. And when I have a one and zero going into a not and, that's a one. Yeah, okay, so this looks right to me. Uh, okay, what's the essential difference between the halting problem and the question of whether a given circuit will reach a stable configuration? Okay, the question, uh, so the difference here between circuit kind of halting problem and, and the, or the circuit stable problem and the, t and the Turing machine halting problem is that if I remember the Turing machine halting problem correctly, it says we can't determine whether a Turing machine will halt. There are an infinite number of potential states. Uh, but in a circuit, we, we do know if it will eventually reach a stable state. We can figure that out uh, by just running through all the possible states, right? There are a finite number of wires. So we can say eventually, you know, either we're going to reach a stable state or we're going to uh, reach a state that we've reached before, which will tell us we're in a loop and it's not stable. So we can uh, deterministically evaluate whether a circuit uh, is is stable, right? Yeah, if, or if yeah, if uh, an input configuration of a circuit will eventually reach a stable configuration. Okay. Five e uh, says how many different two argument Boolean functions. Can you construct using not and XOR gates? Okay, and it gives us some, some started stuff here. Three are listed. Okay, let's X, Y, and it gives us, what does it give me? X, Y, X, not. Okay, zero, 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 one, one, zero. So I think the trick here is I just want to, I don't want to include any overlap. And it said it gives me not in XORs, right? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I think we're obviously gonna wanna try, why not? Uh, we'll probably wanna try like x, x or y and see if that's different and uh, like not x, x or y. I don't know if it's gonna be different if we like say like not here. Uh, will that be different from something we've seen over here? Uh, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll try that and we'll see just to kind of try to be somewhat complete uh, and check our work and make sure we're not losing silly points. X not here is going to be, Y not is going to be, okay, X, X or Y we know is 0, 1, 1, 0. Not this is going to be 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, what if I say something like, how much can you guys see of the whiteboard? Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll go to the, I think you can see more. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll try x not, x or y, uh, and see if this gives us something different. So the x or between y and x not. So here's y, here's x not. The x or is going to look like 1, 0, 0, 1. Oh, we already saw that. That's disappointing. Um, imagine if we do x, x or, y not, probably do something similar, we'll repeat. So x, x or with y not will give us one, zero, zero, one. Yeah, that's useless. That's total garbage. Okay, so it looks like we just have uh, these. Or I guess it's about one, two, three, four, Five, six, am I missing something? Um, I think, so I've knotted, and those are the same. I can't just knot these. That's gonna be useless and give me my original thing again. Um, I don't think I'd come up with anything else, right? I mean, maybe I could like XOR this and, and this. 
Um, I don't know if that would be a lot of fun for me. Let me uh, check the answers really quick to make sure I'm not missing anything major um, and explaining this wrong. Oh no! Oh, I am missing one thing. Okay. So I, I should have tried a couple more things, been a little bit more creative. That's on me. Uh, we get x, x or x, and also not x. Uh, not x, x or x. And these will give us uh, uh, x or x. x is 0 will be exclusively or 0, 0. 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1, 1. So I missed a couple of them. I probably would have stared at this for a while longer if I was actually taking this. Uh, but I didn't want to make you guys wait through my nonsense just staring at the board. But you can see how we would come up with, I don't know, how you would go through different possibilities for coming up with these things. Anyway, maybe I'll lose a couple points. Uh, Finding is about languages, which I, I don't think you need to know. Um, but it asks if L is a language, let reverse L be the set of reverses of all the strings. If L is a regular language, must reverse L be a regular language? Um, okay, so what I think it's asking about here, I don't know if you've looked at PSET 7 yet, you probably haven't and probably shouldn't. Um, I was just filling walkthroughs for it, so I'm familiar with this language stuff. Uh, we have concats. I mean, if, if you don't want to think about languages, and I'm pretty sure you don't need to know about them for the exam, and you can stop here. But if you love to learn, like you should, because you told the Yale admissions officer you do, um, the question here is if we take any of these things, I mean, the, the way we would prove that a reverse of, if L is a lang, to prove that reverse L is a lang, we would need to show that reverse of all of these things fit the definition of a language, I think. Um, so I mean, if I have a string that's like a b, then b a has got to be a language, right? Or like an element of a language is that's kind of a set of reverse strings. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, this seems fine to me. Concat. If I concat, or I guess maybe what it's asking is like, um, wait, does it doesn't make it a regular language. If I take concat a b and I reverse this, it's the same thing. Uh, so R A B equals B A, R concat A B equals B A, which equals R A B, which equals concat A B. Uh, sorry, equals A B, which is concat A B. So well, I think what we're showing here is that R of some string, um, or R of some expression. equals like uh, the uh, just you're just trying to show it the language right so that there's nothing like contradictory here I, I think we're I think this is sufficient to kind of show that we say either reverse of an either a or B is we can just say that's the exact same thing right there's no difference equals either uh, shouldn't these be in separate lists maybe yeah. Okay, either A or B, no difference here. So this is still definitely a language. Right, so we know that because uh, yeah, because either A B is a language, either A B still has to be a language. Repeat, I don't think repeat changes at all when you reverse it, right? So reverse of a repeat something. Uh just a repeat of that something. And if this is a language, this must also, or if this is a string within a language, this must also be a string within a language. So it looks to me like we can convert everything through a reverse to like another, another valid thing, of, another valid composition of a language. I'm not sure I thoroughly understand what this question is asking, but I think I would say yes. Um, yes, if, uh, if L is a regular language, reverse L is also a regular language. Anyway, uh, I hope that this midterm walkthrough thing uh, helped you a little bit. Um, I'm a little bit rushed, I struggled a little bit with a couple of the questions. This one's a, a little bit of a tough practice midterm, not gonna lie. Um, at least I, I thought it was you know, not, not trivial. Uh, maybe I'll try to go over some 
No, I probably won't go over the Unix or over the TC201s. Uh, if you want, but I do recommend looking at the Unix transcript Slade provides um, and looking at the practice TC201 problems that he has. Uh, I mean, the real concepts for TC201s to understand are like shift, uh, indirect stores and loads, um, make sure you know what XOR and AND do kind of mathematically. I don't know when you'd use them, but if you can kind of come up with an approach for solving all of the example TC201 problems, say it provides, I think it'll be good for the TC201 section of the exam. Um, maybe practice drawing a few circuits. Good luck. Uh, wish you all the best. Thanks for watching these walkthroughs.